According to a new study by the Center for Responsive Politics, while Americans lost their jobs, their homes, and their savings, watching retirement and their kids' college educations fade from possibility, Congress watched its number of millionaires increase. 49%, nearly half of them, 261 out of 535 are now millionaires, compared to 1% of America. 55 of them, more than 10%, are now worth more than $10 million. Eight of those are worth at least $100 million. The median wealth of every member of Congress last year was $911,150. $911,150. Individual congressional wealth leaped more than $100,000 in just one year. It was just $785,000 in 2008. The richest of them all, Republican Congressman Darrell Issa of California with a net worth of $303 million. And as I sit here wondering what kind of nation we want to live in, Let's bring in MSNBC political analyst Howard Feynman, also senior political editor of the Huffington Post. Good evening, Howard. Hi, Keith. We have a political party demanding that we borrow money to pay for tax cuts on household income above a quarter million, while it is at the same time refusing to borrow a lot less money so that middle class Americans who can't find work can keep their homes and just barely keep their heads above water. Can you put that into context with the findings of this new study on congressional wealth? Well, Keith, the, uh, the members of Congress don't have to suffer in silence on national television the way Ms. Reinman just did when mm -hmm. you asked her that question. I, I thought the most eloquent thing she said was what she didn't say uh, when she couldn't speak because of the, the embarrassment and the confusion of being a, an educated middle class person who now finds herself in the situation she's in. And that's what makes the contrast so excruciating. Uh, the members of Congress are insulated in many, many ways here. And uh, even though they're supposed to, is, uh, to, to represent the people, I think uh, the moment they get here, uh, or even before they come here, given what it takes to run for office now, don't forget a lot of these people are self-funders now, yep. a lot of it's their money, they get here and that, ke that keeps them even farther away from the people. Do they not get that they don't look like America? I mean, are they, are they pushing for these tax cuts for 250000 and up because it benefits them? No, I don't think in most cases it's that, but I think they're definitely cut off here, Keith. Uh, it's the nature of politics today, which, as I said, favors wealthy people who run, number one. Number two, the Washington area is not like the rest of America. Yep. Uh, a new Forbes study showed that nine of the wealthiest 14 counties in America are in the Washington metropolitan area. Then when you're in Congress, you have platinum level health care, you have great pensions, you have a very good salary, you're a member of the investor class, not the working class, and you're divorced not even from, the, not just from people on the shop floor or people who are poor. You are now disengaged from middle class America. That's what's so stark about this Gulf, Keith. It's not between the richest and the poorest. This is not your grandfather's depression with the soup lines or your, your father's recession of 25 years ago. This is a thing where the gulf is between the leaders and the lead, between the wealthy in Congress and between middle class people that they used to be part of. What happens uh, now? I mean, do Democrats cave on these Bush tax cuts for the rich in order to, to extend the, uh, the unemployment benefits? And, and how does the GOP uh, justify borrowing twice as much for that? Well, first of all, the problem is that the White House sort of pre-caved. Yeah. Uh, they signaled their willingness a while back uh, to accept something short of a permanent extension of tax cuts on the wealthy. And once they did that, that empowered the Republicans to think they could roll through this thing without any compromise whatsoever. And uh, the situation in this lame duck here is that it's becoming far more of a defining period of Congress for President Obama and for the Democrats than they ever figured it would be. And the Republicans are in no mood to compromise. The Republicans are willing to take the bet that Barack Obama and the Democrats aren't going to want to risk abolishing the tax cuts for everybody, at least te even temporarily in some kind of crisis, than, than to, take, to take the Republicans on in this situation. So I don't know that, the, that, that that's how the unemployment benefits will be extended. Uh, I, I, I couldn't say for sure that that's a deal that will be made, because I don't think the Republicans are going to be any, in any mood to do it. They don't live in this world. They don't live in this country. And I think we'd be better off if they didn't live in this country. But that's my opinion, not Howard Feynman's senior no. political editor of the Huffington Post. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Keith.